What's up everybody? Welcome back to Just Get Wet. I'm Derek Rush and today we're going to be breaking down a highly debated topic in the spearfishing world. Pipe and rail spear guns versus wooden spear guns. So let's start off with pipe versus rail spear guns. You will often hear these terms used interchangeably, but it is important to point out that these are different types of spear guns. In a pipe gun, the shaft is guided by the muzzle but it lacks a track that the shaft will actually glide along as it exits the barrel of the spear gun. So here we have your standard pipe gun, oftentimes made of aluminum. You can see on this model that there is no track running along the top of the spear gun. This means that the only thing guiding the shaft is gonna be your muzzle up here. This is great for affordability, really cuts down the price of spear guns. However, it's gonna lack the accuracy that you get from having a track on your spear gun. Here we have a rail gun. Rail guns share many similar components to pipe guns, such as the handle, the muzzle, the power bands. However, rail guns include a track that the shaft can glide along as it exits the barrel. This is great for improving accuracy. For the purpose of today's video, we will be focusing on rail guns. So here we have a rail gun. It's very similar to a pipe gun, except you'll notice that this gun has a track going all the way from the trigger mechanism up through the muzzle. This gives the shaft something to glide on and will help to improve accuracy with your shots. Sometimes, this style of spear gun can be a little bit tricky to load, especially when you're first getting into it, because there's nothing to actually hold the shaft onto the spear gun track as you're loading. So you guys can see here, the shaft has a tendency to want to pop up out of the muzzle until you actually bring this line up and around the muzzle, and that will hold the shaft in place. One of the main advantages to this style of spear gun is going to be their size and weight. These are often made out of aluminum or sometimes even carbon fiber on higher end models. This allows them to be much smaller and lighter than their wooden counterparts. This is great for somebody who is packing their spear guns to travel often or who is just looking to cut down on the extra weight in their baggage. So additionally, their smaller size allows them to track very easily under the water. This is ideal for beginners or those who are just looking for that extra maneuverability. Rail guns can also be a fantastic choice for somebody who's looking to tinker with their equipment. You can do many different modifications to these style guns, such as swapping out the muzzle for a roller muzzle, or you can swap out the handle and trigger for different mechanisms. You can even go so far as to foam fill the spear gun to increase the mass. Because of their materials and the ability to mass produce this style of spear gun, they are often much more affordable than their wooden counterparts. This is great for somebody who's just getting into the sport or who is shopping for a spear gun on a budget. A drawback to this style of spear gun is that there are almost always open tracks. This means that the shaft will sit on top of a track and glide along it rather than sitting inside the barrel of a spear gun, like on an enclosed track. This can put the gun at a higher chance for shaft width. So shaft whip can happen when there's too much pressure applied to your shaft and it can begin to bow as it exits the barrel. This will throw off your accuracy. This is not something that will happen if your spear gun is properly powered. However, it is easier to happen on an open track. This is still something that has the possibility to happen on enclosed track spear guns. However, it is not gonna be as likely. Additionally, rail guns will often have more recoil and muzzle jump than their wooden counterparts. This is due to the difference in weight and mass. So let's touch on this for a minute. Recoil is the feeling that you get when the gun kicks back like a shotgun, kicking backwards. Muzzle jump is when the front of your spear gun raises during the shot. Often, this is associated with traditional style spear guns since the power release comes mainly from the front of the gun. These are things that can be compensated for by foam filling the barrel to add mass or swapping out a muzzle for a roller muzzle to allow for an equal power transfer from the back to the front of the spear gun. It is very important to note when talking about modifying your spear gun that your spear gun is sealed properly. If your rail gun is not sealed properly, it has the tendency to take on water, which can then make it negatively buoyant even at the surface with the shaft out. So in conclusion, rail guns are gonna be very light spear guns that are very maneuverable and can pack a punch. With the right modifications and when properly powered, these are guns that can be very accurate and capable of taking down very big fish at a price that is oftentimes very affordable. Guys like Chris Coates and Ryan Myers have demonstrated time and time again that these rail guns have the possibilities to take down some absolute monsters of the ocean. Now, 
let's move on to wooden spear guns. So I think it goes without saying that one of the main advantages to diving with a wooden spear gun is that you're diving with a work of true craftsmanship in your hands. These guns are often hand built by expert woodworkers, making each one truly one of a kind. Adding to this, because these guns are made of wood, when they start getting beat up, when they start getting worn down, you can sand them and oil them and bring them back to their original like new finish. So here we have an HR1 who was built by Nate Wells. He's a local San Diego gun builder. This is a roller model, um, and we will be having a video coming in the future breaking down the differences between roller versus traditional style spear guns. Wooden spear guns will oftentimes have a greater mass compared to rail guns. This aids in reducing recoil and muzzle jump and will help to improve accuracy. This is hugely beneficial when adding a ton of bands to say a four or five band wooden spear gun. Um, when you start adding that much power to the gun, it's going to start introducing a lot of kick, a lot of recoil, so by having this added mass, it's really going to help mitigate that. This can be hugely beneficial when you're targeting those large game fish at a big distance. With this style of spear gun, you often have the benefit of choosing an enclosed track. You can see this shaft is locked in place by the track that it rides in. This is going to help to reduce the likelihood of shaft whip, as well as increasing accuracy. However, it will limit the size of shaft that can be used. Another benefit of wooden guns are they typically going to be quieter in the water. This is greatly beneficial when hunting shy or skittish fish, such as white sea bass, which we have here off the coast of San Diego. One of the main drawbacks to wooden spear guns is going to be their size and weight, especially if you're somebody who's going to be packing and traveling with these often. These are big guns. They take up a lot of space. They're heavy. So they are going to be very cumbersome if you're somebody who's packing them into sport tubes, taking them on airplanes, so definitely something to take into consideration. This oftentimes means that they will be much slower to maneuver and track through the water and will oftentimes take more time to actually line up on your fish. So it takes a little bit of practice to getting used to diving with one of these spear guns. One of the biggest things people question us about out here in California is why dive with such a big spear gun that looks like an absolute log. But the truth is, California has some, produced some absolute world-class spear fishermen who have targeted some absolute monsters of the ocean. And these guns became popular out of necessity. When you're going after the biggest and baddest fish in the world, you often need to come at it with the biggest and baddest equipment. This is the reason that these guns have become a flagship in California diving. The other biggest con to these spear guns is going to be their price, but at good reason. It takes years of experience and hours of hand hard work before they are ready to be sold. Pair that with the highest quality teak or mahogany and you're looking at a pretty penny for a work of art. Thanks for sticking around to the end of this video. So which spear gun is right for you? Ultimately, it comes down to personal preference and the specific needs of the diver. Do you prioritize maneuverability or accuracy? affordability or craftsmanship? Do you want to take on big fish or small game? Both pipe guns and rail guns and wooden spear guns have their pros and cons, but with the right modifications and practice, both are capable of landing world-class fish. So whether you choose to go the traditional route with a handcrafted wooden spear gun or opt for a more modern approach with an affordable rail gun, the most important thing is that you get out there, dive deep, and just get wet. Don't forget to let us know in the comments which one you prefer and why. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you in the next one. Spear Daddy out.